Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video I'll show you how to build a coloured light signal that can be connected to an Arduino and controlled with JMRI. You might be able to hear some banging noises in the background of this video and that's because it's bonfire night and there are a lot of fireworks going off right now. I recently did a video on how to use servos and Arduino and JMRI to control a semaphore signal and someone asked me whether it was possible to do something similar but with a coloured light signal. I've looked into it and the answer is yes and the good news is that it's very similar to how we controlled the servos. Because it's all based on the same hardware and code you'll need to watch that video first so you know how to set it all up and I'll put a link to that video up here. As well as all the stuff from the servo videos you're going to need a few extra components. You'll need some colour LEDs, I'm using 3mm wide yellow, red and green LEDs. They came from this pack which has loads in it and was £10 on Amazon. You'll need something to hold your LEDs in place, I'm going to use a bit of breadboard for this test signal. Finally you'll need some wires to connect your LEDs to the board, I'm using these short jumper wires. If you find this video useful then please give it a like and subscribe, let's get started. So here's our setup from that first servo video. We've got our Arduino connected to the computer using the USB cable, and we've got the PCA9685 connected to the Arduino. Note that we don't have an external power supply connected to the PCA9685, as we'll be using the power supply from the Arduino for this project. So I've got four LEDs here, they're three millimeter in diameter, and I'm going to create a British Rail 4 aspect signal. So I've got a yellow at the top, followed by a green, followed by another yellow, and then a red. You could of course just have a red and green for stop and go, but I wanted to try something a bit more complicated. I've arranged it so that each LED has the longer leg, the anode, at the top, and the shorter leg, the cathode, at the bottom. Now each LED needs to have their own connection to the PCA9685, so, so we'll be using positions 0, 1, 2 and 3. And for each of those positions we need to connect the ground pins on the PCA9685 to the shorter leg on the LED, so that's the lower leg the way I've arranged it, and the PWM pin on the board to the longer leg, so that's the upper leg in the way I've arranged it. So let's go ahead and start connecting up our pins to our LED legs. So position 0 I'm going to connect to the top LED which is the yellow LED, ground to the shorter leg, and PWM to the longer leg. And this is all a bit fiddly so I'm going to fast forward whilst I do the rest. If you're wondering why we don't need to use any resistors, well apparently that's because the max output from the PWM pins will be about 10 milliamps, and that's low enough to not damage our LEDs. Just putting the final pin in now, and that's everything connected up, so now we're ready to move on to the next step. Next we need to modify the sketch from the servo tutorial, you can download this from my github repository and the link is in the description. So open up the sketch in the Arduino software and before we can upload it we need to modify a few things. So first of all we need to change the number of connections that we're using to four because we've got the four LEDs. Now down here we need to add in our different connections. So we'll copy this and paste it another three times. and we'll update this so it's not going to be a servo connection, we'll put it on position 0, yellow, oh can't spell, yellow LED and for this we're going to put the throw as 4096 and the close as 0 and we're going to repeat that for all of these. So I'll fast forward whilst I do the typing and you, I'll catch up with you at the end. 
Just for reference, 4096 is a value to turn the LED to its maximum brightness. If you're finding that's too bright, then you can always use a lower figure. Okay, so I've updated it so all the throws are 4096, all the closes are zero. I've updated it so that it's we've got position zero, position one, position two, and position three. So we are good to upload. So now is the point where you need to connect your Arduino into the computer and make sure that the lights on the Arduino are on and we'll hit the upload button. So that's the sketch uploaded. Now we're ready to set up the signal in JMRI. In this step, we'll create the signal in JMRI. So the first thing to do is make sure your Arduino software is closed because otherwise there can be a bit of a clash when JMRI tries to communicate with the board. Once you've closed the Arduino software, open up JMRI Panel Pro. And the first thing to check is that we've got our connections set up. So go to Edit, Preferences, go to CMRI and check that the correct serial port for your board is in there, that you've got the right board rate and that you've got a configuration node on address one. So that all looks good. So we can go ahead and go to tools, tables, and we are going to go to signal heads. Okay, so in signal heads, we're gonna set up a signal head for each one of our LEDs. So hit add, and we are going to go to a single output. So we're gonna give it a system name as signal head one or SH1. Then we'll give it the username as, let's say, position one being our top LED, and we'll do one, two, three, four. Then we are going to create a new one, and so the address of our top LED is 1001. Now the appearance when thrown is going to be, let's, I can't remember which way around this is, so our top LED is yellow in color, so we're gonna say yellow when thrown and dark when closed. Hit create. Keep doing this for all the other LEDs. So SH2, position two, create a new 1002. And the second LED down is a green LED. So we'll hit create on that. On to the third LED. So SH3, position three, create a new 1003. Our third LED is a yellow again, so hit create. And our fourth LED, SH4, position four, create a new 1004, and this is our red LED. And that is all of our signal heads created. So now we wanna go to signal mast. And we are going to hit add, and we are going to just give it a username for now, let's call it test mast. Now in your signaling systems, these are all set up for different eras and different railway companies. And for now, we're gonna use British Rail 2003. It gives you all the mast types and we're gonna use a four aspect mask, a four aspect signal with individual aspects because we've set up all our signal heads individually. And then it's gonna be a signal head controlled mast. So here are our signal heads. So we've got position one, position two, position three, and position four. So that's all we need to do, hit create. And now, here's our setup again. If you're wondering why the LEDs look different, it's because I've taken two small LED holders off the ends of infrared sensors, and I've put them on the LEDs here, it, just to help the colors show up better on the video. But if we now go to our test mast, and let's select, um, Proceed, which should give us a green light. Now what it's done is given us everything apart from the green light. So this means we need to invert something. If we go to turnouts, you'll see that we've got all our um, CMRI LEDs set up in here. So we'll just hit invert on all of these. We'll go back to our signal masts and again, we'll select proceed. And there we go, we've got a green LED. Now let's select caution, which should give us the third LED down the yellow one. 
If we select danger, it should give us our red LED at the bottom. Preliminary danger will give us the top and the third LED, both yellows. And it'll even do flashing for you. So if you want flashing caution, there you go, and flashing preliminary caution. Oh, they're a bit out of sync. You can correct that if you go to a different color and then back into preliminary caution. There you go. So now we have a four aspect colored light signal that's working within JMRI and it was pretty easy to put together. You can use that signal just like we did with the semaphore signal in automation within JMRI and JMRI will do all the thinking for you when it comes to changing the aspect to protect the block or a set of points depending on how they've been set. So it's pretty cool really. So hopefully now you've got a colored light signal controlled with JMRI. But before you go using this on your layout, there are a few other things you need to consider. Firstly, current. The power supply from the Arduino when powered with a USB cable can supply a maximum of 500 milliamps. Now I've read that each PCA9685 channel will give a maximum of 10 milliamps, but in theory, each LED could draw around 20 milliamps. So theoretically, that means we could have a maximum of 25 LEDs on at the same time. That's obviously a lot of signals, but if you needed more, then you've got three options. One, you could use a separate Arduino. Two, use lower power LEDs. They do exist, so have a hunt around and see what you can dig up. Three, you could power your LEDs from a separate power supply and then use the PCA9685 output as a switch to turn them on using something such as a MOSFET. MOSFETs would only draw around one milliamp from your Arduino, and although more complicated to wire, it would massively increase the number of LEDs you could connect and have running at the same time. So that's what you need to consider with current. The second thing you need to think about is that with each LED needing a separate pin on the PCA9685 board, you're quickly gonna run out of pins if you've got a lot of LEDs. So it might be worth watching my video on how to chain PCA9685 boards together and massively increase the number of pins that you have available to you. And I'll put the link to that video up here. The third thing to consider is frequency. If you have any flickering with your LEDs, then you may need to increase the value in this line of the Arduino sketch. The problem is that servos need a frequency of 50 to 60 hertz. So if you need to increase the value for your LEDs, then you can't have servos and LEDs running off the same board. However, I think it's possible to set the frequency for each board separately. So you could have one board dedicated to LEDs and one board dedicated to servos. The final thing to consider is that signal lights don't just go on and off immediately like our LEDs do, they fade in and out. If you wanted to introduce a fade, you can put a couple of loops into your code that gradually increase and decrease the value. Here's a test code that I wrote with the changes I made highlighted. You could also use something like this to control the speed of servos if you wanted slower point changes. Sorry about all the background noise in this video, but hopefully you still found it useful. If you did, then please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.